This is lesson 34, VHDL example 19. In this example, we'll design a binary to BCD converter for any number of bits in the binary number. And to do this, we'll use for loops. Now, you remember our shift and add algorithm that we had in lesson 32, where we shift the binary number left one bit, and if eight shifts have taken place, this shows an 8 bit one, then the BCD number will be in the hundreds, tens, and units. And you remember if the binary value is greater than 5 or equal to 5, then we add 3. And we showed how this went for a 8-bit number, FF. We went through those details. And we showed how it went for the 6-bit number using this algorithm, where we clear all the bits in Z, shift B, 3 bits, to the left and then do in this case three times and add our algorithm if the units is greater than four then we add three. So let's see how we can write a VHDL program to do this. Here's the binary to BCD6 for this six bit case say of 3F and this is what we end up with as a circuit. Well, the entity will be B, 5 down to 0. Here's 5 down to 0. And P, we need to go 6 down to 0, because the answer 63 would be 6 down to 0 is the minimum that we need. Then in the architecture, we'll define the variable Z inside this process, <coughs> where we're going to put the binary number in. So the variable Z is 12 down to 0. You see Z here needs to go 12 down to 0, because that's where the answer will fit in. Now, in the architecture we have begin. You remember the first thing we have to do is set z to 0. Well, we can do that with this little for loop. For i in 0 to 12 loop, z goes 12 down to 0. z i, remember z is a variable, so we got colon equals 0. You go through here, setting each bit in Z equal to 0. The next step is to shift B left 3 bits. <clears throat> well, that ends up being Z 8 down to 3. Here it is here. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3 just gets B, which was 5 down to 0. So that shifts B left 3 bits. <clears throat> then we've got to go through this loop 3 times for the next three shifts. So we can say for i in 0 to 2 loop, so this is going to go through three times, and we check the units. <coughs> well, the units is z9 down to 6. 9 down to 6 is the units. So if the units is greater than 4, then we just want to add 3. We can just say z9 down to 6 is z9 down to 6 plus 3. That will put in a little adder. We'll talk about adders later in detail. But we can just do it with a little plus sign here. Then we have to shift Z left one bit. Well, to do that we just set Z 12 down to 1. 12 down to 1. Make that the same as, the, as what Z 11 down to 0 was. So 11 down to 0, if we make that 12 down to 1, that's the same as shifting Z left one bit. We just do that three times and then the answer P will be Z 12 down to 6. You see, 12 down to 6 is the same as P 6 down to 0. So P will then contain the 63. Now we can test it by simulating it. Here we made the counter increase by uh, 3, so we end up with 3F over here, and sure enough it's 63. And the P just goes 0, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, and so forth, incrementing by 3 all the way up to 63. So it works. Well, what would we have to do to make an 8-bit one? We went through this 8-bit one to, see, to check it out back in Lesson 32. All we have to do is change B now to 8 bits, 7 down to 0. P will need 9 down to 0 to contain the 255 maximum, say. And you remember we went through this 
So let's see what we have to change. Z now is 17 down to 0. You see we need 17 down to 0 to get this whole 255 in there. So we go for i equals 0 to 17 loop. This sets all the bits in Z to 0. Now we have to shift B left 3 bits. Well that's going to be that's going to end up being uh, Z 10 down to 3. 10 down to 3 gets B, which was 7 down to 0. And then we have 5 bits left to shift after shifting 3 bits. So we need a for loop to go through 5 times. So for I in 0 to 4 loop, we'll go around 5 times. And we first check the units. Well, the units now are Z 18 down to 8, uh, eight, eight 11 down to 8. So here's Z 11 down to 8 is the units. If that's greater than 4, then we set the units equal to units plus 3. Now we have to check the tens. Well, the tens is Z15 down to 12. So if Z15 down to 12 is greater than 4, then we add 3 to it. And then we have to shift Z left 1 bit. That's Z17 down to 1 gets 16 down to 0. That just shifts Z left 1 bit. And we do this five times, and when we're done, the answer P is in Z17 down to 8. And that will contain the 8-bit number. And we can check it by doing a simulation. Here we make B go incre incrementing by 25, it looks like here, 5, and then 1E is 30, 37 hex is 55. And so we get 80, 105, 130 until we get up to FF, and sure enough it's 255. So the 8-bit one works. Well, you could do it for any number of bits. You could also make a top-level design. Suppose we take this binary to BCD converter. The output was P9 down to 0. We can add 6 more zeros to X and display the switches put a hex value into the switches, and on the seven segment display, display the corresponding decimal number. The, uh, here's what the top level entity would look like. We've got the clock coming in, a button, this should be really M clock, um, switches, L, D, A to G, A, N, and decimal point, and the component binary to B, C, D, and X7 seg B. So we now we put two components in the architecture. And then after the word begin, we have these two signals, X15 down to 0 and P9 down to 0. We'll concatenate these six zeros in front of P for X. The switches go to the LEDs. And then we just port map the binary B, C, D. B gets connected to the switches, P goes to the signal P, then in the X7 seg, X, which contains that P, just goes to X, clock, these should be M clocks really, goes to M clock, uh, clear, goes to button 3, A to G, A, N. So that would be a top level design, you could check that out and, uh, and see how it works. Here's what a 16-bit binary to BCD converter would look like. You could put in, you know, FFFF here and get out, you know, up to 65,535 out. The uh, B then would be 15 down to 0. If you drew the picture, you'd see that P would be 18 down to 0. Variable Z is now up to 34 down to 0. And now you, again, same algorithm, set all the z's to 0. This goes 0 to 34. Shift b left 3 bits. It's now z18 down to 3 gets b. And then, since you've shifted 3 bits, you've got 13 bits left to shift. So now you need for i equals 0 to 12 loops. You're going to go through this uh, another 13 times. You first check the units. The units are now Z19 down to 16. If that's greater than 4, you add 3. Then you check the tens. The tens is Z23 down to 20. Add 3 if it's greater than 4. 
Then you have to check the hundreds. The hundreds is now Z27 down to 24. Then you got to check the thousands. That's Z31 down to 28. Now you don't have to check the ten thousands because the biggest number will be three before you shift it the last time to get a six. Remember, 65,000 is the biggest. So you'll never have to check the ten thousands. But you do have to shift Z left one bit. <coughs> That's going to be <coughs> Z34 down to one gets Z33 down to zero. And when you're done, the P is just going to be Z34 down to 16. So you can do any size B you want, it just changes the limits that you have for Z and for P. And here's the simulation for the 16-bit to see that it works. Here's 0, we're incrementing by 8,000 here. And uh, so FA00 is equal to 64,000 decimal. So these binary to BCD converter uh, programs are very useful to change uh, a hex number to the corresponding decimal number.